Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Dental Cafe. So today we are going to discuss about the episiectomy, a very common procedure you have to perform in your clinic. Okay, then let's begin the video. So first of all, what is episiectomy? Episiectomy is a surgical resection of root tip of the tooth and its removal together with the pathological periapical tissue. So it's in a simple word, it's simply we have to remove the root tip along with the pathology associated. Why we are going to remove the root tip? Because in normal uh, RCT, we are not able to uh, remove the pathological tissue. So we have to perform an episiectomy. In episiectomy, we will remove our root tip along with the pathological tissue. Look at the figure and try to understand what is episiectomy. So we have an infected tissue or a periapical tissue so we will remove the tissue and along with the tissue we are going to remove the root tip so re resection of the root tip is also done so according to the definition surgical resection of root tip along with the removal of pathological periapical tissue I think now it's very well clear what is episiectomy. So we'll perform episiectomy in such cases where standard RCT is not enough to save the tooth. In cases of periapical infection where periapical infected tissue is present. So that we can prevent the tooth, we can prevent the further spread of infection in the jaw, jaw bone or the root of the tooth. Now, what is the indication of episectomy? So, first of all, uh, teeth with active periapical inflammation despite the presence of satisfactory endodontic therapy. So, what is the first indication? In first indication, you did a very good RCT. But after a very good RCT, there is a persistent presence of periapical inflammation in such cases you have to do episiectomy then second teeth with periapical inflammation and unsatisfactory endodontic therapy means um, endodontic therapy is not satisfactory not very good rct is not performed due to many reason because you cannot perform complete rct because of calcified root canal severely curved root canal presence of post or core in root canal in such cases you have to do a uh, episiectomy if there is endo instrument separation in such cases also the third one is the teeth with periapical inflammation where completion of endodontic therapy is impossible mean you can't perform endodontic therapy in such cases also we'll go for episiectomy such as perforation of inferior valve of pulp chamber perforation of root fracture of apical third of tooth and any dental anomalies in such cases you have to do a episiectomy and you have to remove the fracture apical part of the root what is the contraindication of episiectomy first one is the tooth has no function what it means means if tooth has no antagonist and if tooth is isolated means uh, there is a has no importance to serve uh, to serve as a bridge or to serve as a pillar for the fixed prosthesis in such cases we will not perform episiectomy second one is the tooth that cannot be restored me tooth that has an inadequate periodontal support periodontically compromised the tooth with a vertical root fracture in such cases we will go for extraction then compromise medical history and uncooperative patient now the steps in the surgical technique so first step is designing of flap then localization of apex and then removal of pathological tissue fourth step is resection of apex of tooth and then we'll do a retrograde filling and after retrograde filling last step is the wound cleaning and suturing so begin with the uh, first step that is uh, that that is designing of flap so basically we have a uh, three types of flap we are using for episiectomy first one is a semi uh, semi lunar then we have a triangular and the last one is the trapezoidal flap 
so which type of flap we are going to use for a particular type of episiectomy is depends upon the position of the tooth extent of the periapical lesion begin with the first flap that is semi lunar uh, lunar flap to so look at the figure we are using semi lunar flap if we are going to perform a surgery to a limited area as you can see in the figure it is in semi lunar shape we are using semi lunar flap when infection is associated with a single tooth and the next we have a triangular flap as you can see in the figure it is somewhat triangular in shape and the last one is the trapezoidal flap so we have to raise a flap or giving an incision in such a way that we can raise that flap in a trapezoidal shape both these flaps are used when there is an extensive bony defect if especially it is towards the alveolar crest what is the difference between the triangular and the trapezoidal flap in triangular flap it will there is a tension in the tissue in trapezoidal flap it will allow the easily approximation of the flap to its original position and it will not produce any type of tissue tension so as you can see in the video this is a case of re rct Pre uh, previously rct was done by the some other dentist so we open the access opening remove the gp and we take a iopa with the file so that we we have a idea about the working length once you have a idea about the working length then we'll transfer the working length to the patient mouth so that we'll know that from where we have to start giving a incision so that the loss less trauma to the tissue will occur as you can see in the figure we'll mark the working length in the patient mouth so that we have an we have an idea about the roughly idea about the tooth root apex and and it will guide us uh, in the incision and now following the first step of episiectomy we are designing the flap so we are raising trapezoidal flap in this case because pathology is quite big so first of all we are giving in horizontal incision along the gingiva or clavicular incision as you can see in the figure we are giving a horizontal incision along the gingiva and then we are going to give a two vertical relieving incision and this vertical incision always extend to the interdental papilla it should never be to the center of the labial or the buccal surface of the tooth if you are giving it on the labial or the buccal surface of the tooth it will affect the aesthetic of the patient it will affect the smile of the patient after horizontal and the vertical incision now we are going to reflect the flap as you can see in the video we are going to reflect the flap and what is the advantages of trapezoidal flap it provide a excellent access trapezoidal flap is the only flap which provides the excellent access to the area of operation after reflap reflecting the flap we are going to put a file in the canal so that we can see the root apex as you can see in the video there is a complete loss of bone at the apex of the tooth due to a pathology or due to a infection so you can easily see the file beyond the apex as there is no bone on the apex of the tooth now the next step is the localization of apex and the exposure of the periapical area for localization of apex we are going to use a round burr with a steady stream of saline solution and the bone covering the root tip is removed peripherally and then creating an osseous window until the apex of the tooth is exposed shortly we can understand that we will create a window with the help of round burr that is osseous window so that we can reach the apex अच्छा क्या होता है इन 90% ऑफ द केसेस पेरिफरल लीजन 
perforate the buccal bone in such cases localization and the exposure of the root tip is easy because you don't need to remove the bone and create a osseous window because lesion already perforate the buccal bone look at the figure and try to understand so we have an infected tissue periapically and a tooth apex so with the help of round work we are going to remove the bone covering the root tip so that we can expose the root tip or we can expose the apex of the tooth by creating the osseous window with the help of round work as you can see in the figure now the next step is the removal of pathological tissue so after creating the osseous window we are going to remove the pathological tissue look at the figure we are removing the pathological tissue with the help of curate we can easily remove the periapical tissue or the infected tissue after removal of the tissue resection of the apex of the tooth so how you how we will resect the tooth apex so the apex is resected 2 to 3 mm of the total root length with a narrow fissure burr and beveled at 45 degree angle to the long axis of the tooth very important point bevel at 45 degree angle to the long axis of the tooth look at the figure apex is resected as you can see in the figure and it is to be 2 to 3 mm of the total root length and resection is not done straight it should be at 45 degree angle to the long axis of the tooth as you can see in the figure we have a long axis of the tooth and the resection of the root is done at the 45 degree angle after resection of the root tip now we are going to do a retrograde filling retrograde filling, filling matlab from from the apex of the tooth after removing a root now we are going to do a retrograde filling so amalgam is the most commonly used retrograde filling material it was used previously it was very good uh, retrograde material previously but now we are using a mta mineral trioxide aggregate become the gold standard as root and filling material there are other material you can use as retrograde filling we have gold we have resin composite material we have glass inomers cements and we have compomers as you can see in the figure we are doing a retrograde filling by using mta mineral trioxide aggregate now the next step is wound cleaning and suturing so the flap is repositioned and in interrupted suture are placed look at the figure we are going to reposition the flap and then suture are placed and then we are going to wait for the healing of the periapical area and we will check every 6 to 12 month it will take a time for complete formation of bone as you can see in the figure we have a healed bone now the advantages of the apicectomy first one is the to relieve tooth pain save original tooth from extraction then the third one is the maximum access and the visibility because of trapezoidal flap and recovery time is short now the disadvantages of apicectomy first one is the gingival recession yes you can notice the gingival re recession as the healing occurs scaring and delayed healing this is also occur exposing cervical root surface exposing crown margins some amount of tissue loss some amount of gingival re recession this will always occur in any type of oral surgery I hope this video is helpful for you to understand what is episectomy and how to perform. If you want more such type of video related to any topic, do comment on comment section. Very soon, I will start neat series. It will be helpful for you 
in need preparation and if you want any topic related to need for me to explain do comment and yeah don't forget to like share and subscribe my youtube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest update